Welcome everyone to another edition of 10K Movies. Uh, this is Ryan, joined as always by Tom and JD. Guys, how we doing? Doing good. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing good. Sitting here on pit row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely uh, came uh, festive, uh, as you guys may or may not know. Yeah, we watched Rush last week, so we'll be talking about that today. Um, some other things going on. Opening day was yesterday of MLB season, so that's nice to have baseball back while we're losing, uh, yeah, college basketball here shortly, which is the, also the Final Four this weekend and Championship Monday. Um, I don't think any of us have good brackets anymore, like and just period across the world, but do you guys have a favorite that you either want to win, think's going to win? What do you guys think about that? uh honestly i don't care like <laughs> i know it's not a great answer but <laughs> i uh i feel like this is one like probably the weirdest final four i've ever seen like truly like it's mm -hmm. five nine like four but um yeah for how bad brackets were mine wasn't terrible just because i had uconn in the final four so i know we do uh the three of us in our fantasy league, we do a bracket to determine draft order. I think I'm like second or third right now. So yeah. a lot better than last year. I came 12 uh, out of 12. <laughs> Come back story. There. Um, and you lost your champ first week, but still. You know, yeah. It's, um, still it's a lesson in resiliency for those of you out there. You hit a bump in the road <laughs> early on. Just keep, keep plugging away. So honestly, proud of my bracket. Um for that reason and i feel like i'm way more confident going into the fantasy season i feel like it's my, my year i never get high picks so. <laughs> the <laughs> year you make the playoffs or <laughs> <laughs> your words not mine but uh, <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's feeling good spring is fully sprung i feel like with with baseball coming back but um yeah i, I was in cincinnati yesterday for reds opening day quite a time there uh, not not because of the on the field action either. It was just a, a ruckus day, and luckily I wasn't the the ruckus one by any means. I was simply a bystander. For some other Always a goal. Rowdy folks um, that were making other people's lives unpleasant because of their <laughs> drinking habits. But uh, it lived to tell the tale. Reds lost by the Pirates, which is which is rough. But to any Pirates fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> It can't be that many out there. Yeah, there, there were like four. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't really have a preference. I think uh, honestly, I think maybe one of the teams that have never won it. Like, I mean, UConn has won it many times. Um, like FAU, like honestly, we found Miami. Really, I I can't even tell you the other team in it. I can't remember. San Diego State. San Diego State. Yeah. So, I I truly like don't have a dog in the fight. Uh. I took a future on UConn, I think, last week to win. So, for the draft team. So, it sounds like you do have a dog in the fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just a pup. But yeah. I, I don't really have as much, uh, you know, it's, what's crazy is Final Four so big. Going back to the Reds game tomorrow, it's like I would – I'm more invested in game two out of 162 of baseball. Yeah. Than the Final Four basketball. So, um, yeah, what about you guys? What are you thinking for the weekend? Are you, are you excited, first of all? Um do you have a dog in the fight, or what's what's your excitement level? Are you going to be glued to, glued to the games, or? I feel like I'm not excited at all, and I feel like it's just because, like you said, I don't really care who wins, but I have a favorite, and they probably are the favorite. I want UConn to win it all because I had all three other teams losing in the first round, so <laughs> fade my bracket. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm rooting for UConn. I said earlier in the season I think they're going to go to the final game. Didn't follow my heart on that one, and, yeah, I'm just going with UConn. But I I'm – yeah, I mean, yeah. I had all three other teams losing the first round as well. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's crazy. Wow. And then, uh, oh, yeah. Um, the thing I'm looking forward to most is the Masters is next week. Uh, baseball started. You guys are bigger baseball fans than me. I still follow the Reds, but they're trash. Uh, sorry to offend anyone that thinks they're not. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm just looking forward to the Masters. I mean, I'll watch the games this weekend and Monday, but, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm kind of the same boat. Like I think I think it's been an exciting tournament. Like I love upsets and everything, but at this point it's like three of the four, like 
overperforming, which is great. Like I, I still think, you know, they're better than the teams they beat, but it's like, I feel like it's just going to run out of gas at this point. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I think it'd be cool to see like, I mean, like FAU winning, that'd be pretty cool. I think. Um, but it's not like I'm going to be like rooting super hardcore for him, whatever. I think UConn's going to win just because they seem like they're the best team of the bunch. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to, I mean, I'll watch the games and everything, but kind of like Utah, like, you know, baseball season just started. It's always the best at the beginning and or end, but if you don't make it to the end, then it's like, you know, right. Still fun. I mean, but like if your team's out of it, then it sucks. But yeah. Um, yeah, Cubs started off hot yesterday, 1-0, so hopefully that keeps going. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, but, yeah, I guess if I had to pick, I think UConn wins, would want FAU to win, I guess. But we'll see. Um, see how that goes. I also had I had two of the four losing first round, which both on the left side of the bracket. Um, so, yeah, it was just – it was a bad, uh, bad prediction uh, year for me for March Madness. So. Uh, yeah, but like you said, I mean that's that's the beauty of uh yeah season baseball. It's like every team has a chance. You feel like so. Yeah, by the end of the I mean, I, I saw something where like the the ratings for March Madness year are way down, like later into the tournament. Like mm -hmm. basically, I saw some like study or whatever that was like for ratings. Like they they do love um you know they do love like the early round upsets because that gets people super excited and like like we talked about I think last week like the first rounds first two rounds are big on upsets but i guess for ratings like it really helps to at least have a couple blue bloods yeah um, for sure that people follow so i'm still gonna watch it because you know it's still the final four like i feel like you kind of if you're a fan i mean you got to watch the big yeah games. like i you know i didn't like the eagles or the chiefs but you're not gonna not watch yeah that's in that yeah um, and even like even though it's teams i don't care about like i'd still rather watch this 10 times out of 10 than just like an NBA game right now, which I've seen a lot of NBA fans coming out of like the woodwork and are like, oh. this is why, you know, college basketball sucks. Like it's such an inferior product and all that, everything. It's like, well, yeah, I guess, I mean, like there are professionals in the NBA clearly, I mean, duh, but I don't know. I just don't like that style of basketball personally. So I would rather watch this like 10 times out of 10 over that, but yeah, I mean, it definitely. I could see the ratings why they would go down and everything, but I mean, I still, I mean, it's only two games left of the season. Like, mm -hmm. well, yeah. I guess three, but, um, you know, not gonna have this for a long time. So might as mm -hmm. well just watch it soaking in. Did you see the the women's uh, Elite Eight game or whatever got more ratings on ESPN or more yeah. viewers on ESPN than any NBA game all season on, on ESPN? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to watch NBA playoffs, sure. Like, not I like, like every NBA. game or anything, but, like, I don't know. Getting up for, like, a random game in the middle of the season for NBA, kind of like – I mean, it's kind of like baseball unless it's your favorite team. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if I'm picking just random teams, like, I'm not – you know, it's just different. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean, no shit. <laughs> Kevin Durant's better than, like <laughs> – Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small forward. <laughs> yeah like, some guy that's going to be playing four years in Don or like stuck in like latvia or something the right. rest of his career or right. just behind a desk right. i mean <laughs> if the theory just because better basketball players play together then why aren't the olympics the most watched basketball every every four years you know yeah i feel exactly. like no one watches it yeah <laughs> i know i don't yeah <laughs> I mean, same thing. Like, there's a lot of people that like college football way more than the nfl i mean i'm not one yeah. of them but i know there are people like you know, I feel like, especially like in the South, like SEC country, it's like they are way more invested in college football than. Oh yeah, it's king. There's a lot of people like that where it's like, maybe it's because our team isn't that good in college football, so we're not as invested. Yeah, they suck. But I just love NFL. I think NFL is my favorite. I think it's the best product if we're talking I, about. I think it is too. Products. I think it's the best league. Like I think it's, I think 12 months a year you can follow the NFL. Oh yeah. Be entertained. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, yeah, I, I all, I also prefer it like the most out of everything, but over college football, but even if there are people, yeah, especially like you said, in the SEC country and everything that like it more, I'm not going to be like, right. you're wrong. Like, you know, right. it's just no, I get it. wrong get opinion, it. but like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Bigger part of the, the, the culture of football there, you know, everywhere is different. It's like Texas, like high school football is big. People want to play high school more than the NFL. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all right. I'm not going to knock you for it, but 
I mean, I'm sure there's people in Indiana that like, I'm a bigger high school basketball fan. Than <laughs> <NBA>. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. Teach their own. Teach their sure. own. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Speaking on kind of, uh, opinions i guess i don't know if that's really a great segue but we did have another uh did have another week of uh what was it the billboard hits uh which always i know i don't think we have any of us has picked the same favorite song of the year yet so we'll see if that continues here but um so yeah i guess differing opinions there there you go there's the connection but um this week yeah we had night or yeah what was it, 1983 i think Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for those that have been following, you know, pick a pick a new year each week uh, for Billboard hits. So this week it was 1983. Um, thought it was pretty solid. Uh, I think it. I think it was probably the deepest one we've had in a while for sure. Um, but uh, I went personally with a classic favorite of mine, which I think. First time I heard this was from movie Big Fat Liar. I think that's what that's called. This was a runner-up. Paul uh, Giamatti, but yeah, it's Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran. I just love that song. Like it, you know, great beat and everything. I honestly don't even know what they're saying at the time in it, but I just think it's an awesome song. So that was that was my winner. Hungry Like the Rhino. Yeah, exactly. I think you kind of alluded to it last week, but uh, I could have had a top five of just only the MJ songs here. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's what I I got that. I got this week mixed up with last one. I took a sneak peek, so I figured you were going to go that way this time. Uh, Yeah, and then uh, there's some other ones. Uh, Hungry Like the Wolf is one of my all-time, like, probably top 20 favorite songs. Not even just because I think it's, like, a great song. I just love the song for whatever reason. Like you said, Big Fat Liar, too. Uh, Probably the first time I heard it. Um, but I went with a song that I don't know if I ever heard all the way through, but I heard a lot about, and I didn't want to choose Michael Jackson or any other songs I already know because I feel like I always do. So I went with Sexual Healing by Marvin oh, Gaye. Okay. So you ever heard, heard that one? Uh, never. I don't think I ever heard it all the way through. I've heard like clips or put, people put it on a video or something. I've always heard of Marvin Gaye, and like I've heard some of his other songs, but never that one. Good song. Yeah. Oh, I really like it. Um, I'm with you, JD. I had a. Uh... I had Ryan's pick probably as my runner up. Um, thought about taking it. That, that that song actually reminds me of rock band for some reason. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good too. I'm one of the rock bands, but uh, I went with a song. I think JD, you talked about it last week, where like you usually pick a song you heard for the first time, like you did this week. Mm-hmm. Um, where I feel like I'd been picking mostly songs that I already known. Um, this year I did, or this year as an '83, I did pick a song <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never heard before um which flashback to last year 82 we talked about men at work and they were in my um runner up but the song i heard was called overkill and by men at work and I, I really liked it it uh i listened to the, the playlist you know a few times and like i put i put it on shuffle at one point i heard this song a few different times i really liked it um so yeah that was my pick i think i think the year overall was was pretty deep but i still don't think i love like 80s music like i think 83 was my favorite year it was it might have been but i think there was a couple of like late 70s years i learned like more yeah um i think i'm looking forward to the 90s yeah the seeing what we've got there so uh yeah overkill by minute work was my pick um really good band i knew i like like two of their songs and now i'm starting to to hear some more and i'm liking it a little bit more so uh, one thing I'm starting to notice is I think there are good songs in some of these years, but they've been overplayed since they came out. Like they're even overplayed now, kind of uh, like Centerfold by Jay Gilesman or not, uh, not sorry. That's last year, last year. Uh, Come on Eileen by. Uh, yeah. X-Men Which I love that song, but yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And uh, I know we've talked about this, but like the killers uh, have some great songs that just get overplayed. And I love the song. Yeah, and I always will. Shame. It's a bright side, but uh i think there's a lot of songs as we move forward that i'm starting to realize like it kind of makes it like feel worse for the year when i listen to it but it's mainly just because it's been overplayed yeah i know pretty much anything journey too yeah yeah (laughs) try to look at like songs in a vacuum then it's like oh this was actually amazing so and mr brightside if you just took it face value you listen to it one time by yourself like this song is unbelievably good but 
you know you've heard it in a bar a thousand times yeah. oh it's like the classic like you have a live band they must always play it oh, and yeah. if someone doesn't <laughs> if they don't have it on their list someone requests it right right yep. yeah that's a good point very good point yeah um also what we had over the week uh was like i alluded to at the top and jd's background does was rush uh which was jd's pick also i apologize um <laughs> there's a big storm going out on right now where i'm at so if you hear thunder or anything that's that's what that is so hopefully we can make it through this but um yeah, I don't know if you. Yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, Rush. Rush was the uh, was picked this week. JD, it was yours. So, if you want to give us a give us a synopsis and start us off with your uh, thoughts on it. Uh, yeah. So, IMDb synopsis: the merciless 1970s rivalry between Formula One rivals James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Uh, based on a true story, it's actually happened. Well, I don't know if everything actually happened, but majority uh, is based in uh, fiction or what nonfiction, I guess. Anyway, uh, I really liked it. Um, I actually came down from my original rating that I'm looking at on a spreadsheet, uh, but I'm at a 91. Um, and I will preface that by, or I guess not preface, but I will say when I watch this movie, I'm not necessarily thinking like full critic mode. Cause I think there's some things that the movie could improve on as like a product, but as far as like an enjoyability standpoint, I love this movie like a lot. Um, and it checks a lot of boxes for me. I think there's like pretty good acting. Uh, it's based in sports, based on true story. Uh, direct or er, um, the scores by Hans Zimmer, um, directed by Ron Howard. Like a lot of box checks there. I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna like that movie even if I haven't seen it before. Yeah, uh, I think it's. Is it mine now? Yeah, yeah, you can yep. go, Tom. Uh, or is it you, Ryan? I think I think it might be you. Okay, I'll go. But yeah, basically, uh, kind of echo everything you said there, Jay. Um, you can just tell by everyone involved, it's going to be a good one. I actually didn't know Hans Zimmer did the score, but that makes a lot of sense because I loved it. And that's one thing I want to talk about. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's great. Not a huge racing fan at all. Like, not not a huge one. Like, I'm just not a racing fan in any capacity. But this does a good job of like, I think more so just focusing on the super interesting story um, instead of like, you know, just being like a racing movie um, necessarily, but yeah, very close to you, Jay. Um, love this movie. Thought it was great. Uh, great performance was all around. So I'm right at a 90. So right okay. below you. What about you, Tommy? Uh, no, I, I love it too. I, I think JD, what you mentioned is something I was thinking about a lot with this movie. Like, how I score them where um, I feel like sometimes you see a movie and you're just like, that's such an easy, enjoyable watch. So it's like trying to, trying to balance that of like critically how you think of it. Like I know Ryan, you based your rankings on that too, where it's like how much you like it, but also how much you, you know, you, you break it out of like how good the movie was, how, right. how well they did. But um, I love this movie too. I, I thought it was awesome. Similar to what you said, JD. I, I know we talked about, a couple weeks ago like with mystic river like i think all of our kind of like that drama suspense um you know even like some crime in, in kind of that range but i think my number two favorite genre is a movie like this like a like a biopic like anything that's kind of going through like a true story or or going through somebody's life um which this one obviously does in like a snapshot of a couple years i i loved it too um i am quite a bit lower than you guys which kind of shocked me but i'm at an 82 um so still really liked it yeah, so still respectful. yeah yeah i think i mean it looks like that puts it at 87.7 or 88 so still a really good score there yeah, yeah. i think and, uh, yeah i think that's fair like you said i mean um yeah eight, i mean 87 that's that's a great score overall mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like to go into a little bit, I, so I don't know, Ryan, you talked a little bit about not watching racing or not being a racing fan or whatever. So I saw this movie like maybe three years ago for the first time. And I think I watched it on a Saturday, looked up the next F1 race, which was literally the next day on a Sunday. Uh, and literally since then, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm an avid fan, but I probably, uh, especially during football season, cause w wake up, have some coffee, go to my fantasy roster and have F1 on in the background. That's like my ideal Sunday morning. Um, but 
I would say this like got me to actually pay a little more attention. I know a lot of people like the drives to survive on Netflix. I actually haven't watched that, but I've heard it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, similar to you, not a huge racing guy outside of that, but this made me like F1 more. Yeah. No, I can yeah. see that. Um, same as you, Ryan. I, I mean, I love sports. I'm not a huge racing guy in any capacity, I would say, but uh, no, I, I just loved, uh, I love the whole dynamic of this movie. The whole rivalry, um, you know, the characters, kind of the build up. I love like the different European settings. I thought were really cool. Um, the one thing I was thinking about during the movie, though, and I think it's kind of true in racing, but like, doesn't the guy with the better car pretty much win every time? <laughs> yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Because I did like how they do have the rivalry. Like, I mean, the rivalry is great just as it is, but like also exactly that like you have the better mechanic i guess you want to say because nicky lauda was kind of like that too like he did a lot of the uh, work and kind of swindled his way into right um like getting a shot but he you know he's also a great driver too but he's got more of like the mechanical background i'd say whereas james punt like they say, like he's like just just the talent and everything and it has like the has like the guts to like you know shoot the gap or whatever i forget the exact wording they said but I was thinking that I was trying to like relate it to a different sport that I actually like watch um, <laughs> that's not racing. And I was kind of thinking, wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this. And this is probably not the best example at all, but kind of like um, Kobe and Shaq when they're on Lakers. So like Nicky Lauda's Kobe, um, cause he's got like that drive and he just wants to keep like battling and everything. But then, James Hunt, like once he gets like that one title, which Shaq, Shaq had obviously more than just the one title, but um, like he's like good and everything. And he like doesn't really like put a lot of um, off season effort into it at all, which like, seemed like kind of Shaq did that. Like, you know, he kind of just relied on like his God given abilities. Um, and that's, I did like that whole kind of foil to it uh, between the two. So um, I was just kind of like thinking of relating it to that, like the whole time, but I agree that like, I feel like the car has almost everything to do with it in that yeah. capacity. Well, that's, I mean, you kind of hit on it, which I thought too, like made more sense to me. Like it was cool. Like Nikki was the one that was actually like improving the car. So it's like, it's almost like you talked about like Kobe and Shaq. I think that's a really good comparison. I mean, JD, you probably know more about the F1 side. So maybe talk about that but like i was thinking that is like uh you know from like nikki's like technical standpoint like yeah like you said james is pretty much straight driver like he's got a really good like instinct so i was thinking about it as like maybe like a quarterback in the nfl where it's like you know maybe one guy has like better arm talent but the other one's you know the other guy can like read a defense better or mm -hmm. you know game he, manager he, he, right. yeah like improvise during the game i feel like that was kind of nikki a little bit where it's like yeah, he's a good driver, but also, like, part of what he brings to the team is, like, improving his car, which is a huge part of it, too. So, mm -hmm. I was thinking about that, too, because, like, James would, like, beat his head, like, beat his ass pretty much in Formula 3 when they were both driving, like, beaters, basically. Yeah. And then he gets a Ferrari, and obviously... <laughs> yeah, it goes nuts. ...every time, so I was just like, that doesn't seem fair. Um, but, yeah, I like that. I like the comparison with Kobe and Shaq. I thought, I mean, not to jump to the very end, but I thought it was... You know when when James finally gets his gets his ring and he uh he certainly enjoys it. Whereas like Nikki, you know, he starts flying a plane because it like makes him kind yeah. of a percentage more focused when he's driving a car. <laughs> I thought that was like yeah, it was great. It was the great. I I love the conflicting personalities and that that issue. So, uh, what what do you think though, Jay? I know you like you said you follow F one a little bit. Uh, I mean, I agree kind of with whatever you guys say but i think that's kind of what makes f1 cool is uh like not everyone's racing in the same car and anyone you like your team can set up the car however you want obviously there's still you know rules and regulations uh as we see in the show you know the one point they're yeah. 1.5 centimeters too wide Nikki uh, ran them out. oh that's that seems totally right exactly right. too yeah. uh, and i also like the comparisons you guys brought up you know kobe and shaq because i mean I, they both clearly really wanted to win like very bad but Nicky Lotta, you know, he goes to bed early, he wakes up early, he's practicing, he's, you know, thinking about how he can, you know, model his car so it works better. And James, I mean, he's still practicing and all that stuff, but he's going out to parties, he's with supermodels. Uh, I mean, also Olivia Wilde and Natalie Dormier, they're both, yeah. Um, 
it's uh, very different people, which I don't know if they were necessarily that drastic in real life. I mean, probably, maybe, I don't know, but I think that makes the rivalry that much better just given how different of people they were. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even in F1 now, I'd say you kind of have your favorites and they seem to win a lot for a while as Lewis Hamilton. Now it's kind of Max Verstappen in uh, with the Red Bull. Uh, but I still think it's fun to watch, even though knowing more or less who could win before the race starts is kind of boring. But it also, as you see in the show, cars break down all the time, um, and they also go extremely fast. So it's kind of kind of excited to see that part. Yeah, yeah. and this is kind of like. Um, uh, did you guys see Ford versus Ferrari as well? Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of thinking about it like that. I think I like this just a little bit more than that one. Just because I, I think like the story between the two is a lot more interesting. Where in that, in that kind of, in this one, like focuses more on the characters. I think more than just like the actual, um, you know, the racing itself. Kind of like what I was saying, but like that one, it's like opposite. It's more about like you know how the, uh, like the business side of things more, which I like that too. Like that was great. Um, but I just like, and I think it goes to like the acting and everything as well. But like, I mean, both of these characters kind of like they're, they're likable, but also suck at the same time. Um, cause like Nikki's like a prick. Um, and James is like, you know, kind of like show off and, you know, hockey and all that, like arrogant like that except when he sticks up for Nikki, like behind the scenes, that's like one of the things, I don't know if that's what you were saying, Jay, like did everything happen? Like, I hope that part happened. Cause that was awesome. Like when he beat that reporter up. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, like, you know, with their flaws, like you're rooting for them both too. Um, Cause like Nikki goes through that traumatic uh, injury and everything, which is nuts. Uh, I think that part happened. Yeah, um, it did. So, I mean, that just is like crazy over like, and then he wanted to come back and still go after that's nuts. Um, and then James too, like, you know, he didn't go through like a physical thing, but like a more of an emotional side of things. So they each kind of have a comeback in that way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I really liked uh, rooting for these characters and everything too. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was like a big part of why I liked it so much. Yeah, no, I was going to, I was actually glad you brought that up because I felt the same way where I thought there's a really interesting dynamic with the characters and like the rivalry as a whole, because like you said, Ryan, like there was a point where I think the start of the movie, um, you know, I hated Nikki. He was super yeah. annoying. And then like literally three minutes later, I hated James because he was like such a <laughs> cocky prick. And I liked Nikki because he seemed like more of the underdog. And then like Nikki goes to Ferrari and like, again, he's annoying. He's a prick. Yeah, I'm rooting for James as the underdog. So it's like, it does go back and forth. Um, and I really like kind of the dynamic. And actually something I read about, like afterwards, is like the real Nicky Lauda, um, like was a huge fan of this movie. Like he said it was really, really accurate. Um, but the one thing he said was like, that him and James are actually pretty good friends. Like the rivalry was real, but like, like he said at the very end, where like they did respect each other. Right. Um, and like push each other to be better. But I really liked, um, you know, like kind of like when Nikki was really on top and like, I think it was like 75 or whatever, when he was winning, uh, he won like the cup or whatever you call it, like the world championship. And like, he was telling James, like, you know, it's not about being like, it's not about being everybody's friend and being the party boy. Like it's about being like serious. You need people to fear you and respect you. And then like on the flip side, like when they, he didn't want to have the race. I think it was, uh, in Germany when he huge wreck raining yeah he was really pushing for it but like nobody on the tour liked him and they all wanted to catch him in points and then you know you saw james and he kind of like made eye contact with one or two other racers and they uh you know they, they voted his way and they had the race and james made a comment like you know sometimes it does pay to to be liked so i think that was yeah interesting their dynamic and style and you know, the right answer is maybe somewhere in between, like maybe there is no right answer, but, um, you know, just showing kind of that dynamic and how that, how that played out in their different personalities. And I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. Like kind of the back and forth there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like both the, like, I mean, 
to put it plainly, towards the beginning of this movie, I don't really know who you're rooting for. I think it kind of follows James Hunt first, but they're both kind of dicks in their own way. I mean, like yeah. you said, J- like the first time they see each other at F3, you know, James makes that, uh, I guess, rude move. I don't know. T- overtakes him on the corner and then Nikki almost crashes and then Nikki, they, you know, have their altercation after the F3 race, which starts the rivalry. Um, that's one of the things where I'm like, I don't know, did that actually happen the first time they met? uh but either way it kind of starts the rivalry and then like you're like dude he's kind of being rude to somebody doesn't even know just beat him in a race but then uh you know nikki's kind of on top kind of winning everything so you're kind of rooting for james like it's the underdog story but then nikki gets in a car accident you know almost dies and then 41 days later he's literally racing again because he wants to beat james he's not gonna let james just take it uh so yeah i i like that you guys both say you kind of root for both of them towards the end even though I would say probably leaning James because he's the underdog most of the story, but either way, both of them. And he's more likable as a character. Like, I just think of when Nikki Lauda and uh, Regazzoni are going to that one party. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm better than you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm quicker. And then he's like, come on, man, we all like racing. That's why I do. He's like, nah, if I had more skill and can make more money doing something yeah. else, I would. <laughs> yeah. And I was just thinking, like, imagine your passion. Someone like, act, I mean, he probably actually is better than you telling you he'd rather do something else if he was better at it or better at it. You know what I mean? It'd yeah. be uh, be kind of a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that's uh, well, you, you mentioned, like, Crash Judy and, like, um, him coming back so early. That was insane, like, that he was able to. And, like, obviously, that's based on the real history of it. But yeah. I think what you talked about there, like, I think that was – to me the best scene in the movie by far was like when he came back um they had like a brief you know you kind of see like i don't know i feel like too like you see a rivalry and you see both guys like hate each other but like they had obviously had a friendly relationship but like james finally like takes some like ownership he's like dude i'm sorry like you know i was really worried about you like if if we hadn't raced that day obviously you wouldn't have wrecked and then you know nikki is like yeah you're right like put like you know fuck you you that that is true like we wouldn't have raced if it wasn't for you and then he's like you know when i was in my hospital bed like going through all that and i saw you winning all those races that's what drove me to get back on and like that is like holy shit like th- i thought that was the best scene and the best like interaction there yeah i like that me, like, the power of the rivalry like i'm in like horrible like i'm literally like it was a near fatal crash and i'm doing everything i can because i want to get back and beat your ass like yeah it's not the definition of like driving each other to be better like no, no pun intended yeah you know, no pun intended but like a rivalry tree truly pushing you to be the best you can because somebody's on your heels the whole time so yeah i, I don't know i thought that was the coolest scene like that was like chills when i saw that I was like, holy shit yeah i mean that's when you see the whole character dynamic between both of them kind of yeah go to like respect instead of hatred because that's also like right when uh james beats up the reporter mm-hmm. yeah uh, which i looked that up it apparently that is not real but Damn, everyone that not. knew james including james's son said we wouldn't be shocked if it was <laughs> <laughs> like that it would be in his character yeah uh, but yeah i mean it's just kind of a weird story because usually when you watch a rivalry like you don't know where it's going to end but the fact that like i mean obviously we don't know what's movie and what's real but at the end he's like yeah he's like the only guy i respected on on the whole circuit it yeah kind of i just like the way it ended it makes you feel good for both of them because you're kind of rooting for both of them the whole way and like sometimes in those rivalries one of them ends up being like a huge asshole um even though they both were at times you end up liking both of them yeah i agree um my my question is like is is james hunt's championship kind of like a mickey mouse ring though because you know, Nikki Lauda was out for an extended period of time. That's kind of the only reason James caught up to him. And then even in the final race, Nikki like bows out because of the rain again, which don't blame him there. But like, yeah. I mean, and like, that's twenty percent, not one percent more. That's true. Yeah, the <laughs> only I like that a lot. The only thing, and another thing I don't like about, I guess if it's just F one or just racing in general, like it is weird. You know, the final race, you get third, but you still win, like, overall. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. I mean, I, I don't I don't think you should have to, like, win every race, but that's that's kind of weird. It's like, oh, I got third place, but you won everything, and then you get, like, celebrate like you won. I don't know. It's just weird. But um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, is is that is that championship, um, like, does that hold up? What would you think? 
I was thinking that too. I thought it was funny because like, you know, he won and then James obviously goes on a freaking ramp. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> out. Like two days later. And, yeah. You know, he's obviously lived his life to the fullest. Um, Too like, full. Nikki, yeah. And, and Nikki was, uh, you know, Nikki said something. He's like, dude, you got to go back to training. Like, what the hell? And like, Nikki's immediately back to training. And to your point, like, I was wondering though about James too. Like, and I think Nikki kind of touched upon it where he's like, James just wanted to check the box and be like, I was a champion. Mm-hmm. But yeah, same thing where it's like, one, he had no chance of getting back to the points unless Nikki obviously crashes. And like, that's how big Nikki's lead was that it was even a game basically, so to speak. Um, but yeah, then of course, Nikki bows out of the last race, but uh, to be fair, James's comeback at the end was like pretty insane. Like the fact that he did win and got to yeah. third, um, that almost felt like he won just getting back into third, but no, I was thinking that too. And like, Nikki was like, dude, you gotta get back to training. Like, I feel like if I was Nikki, I'd be like, dude, that was the biggest bullshit championship of all time. Like, you call that a championship. Like, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, right. like talking shit to him to get him like back because then it shows like james literally retired two years later <laughs> He's like, yeah this shit um but it just shows like all he cared about was getting that one right it reminds me of like lebron and the lakers and that like covid season yeah like, right that's what i was thinking yeah lamicky yeah the- I was one of lebron's rivals i'd be like dude you call that a championship like jordan's at six and you're at three or <laughs> five but yeah that's what or five yeah i'd be saying that if i were nikki or is he at five I think he's at four, but oh yeah, it's four. Two I with mean, the Heat, one with the Cavs, one with the yeah, yeah, four. I mean, I feel like if I were Nicky, I would have been saying that to like really stoke his gears, like get him back going. I think he was trying to a little bit in the hangar, but like yeah, yeah, you could just tell, like like he's like he just he just got to check the box, like you said. Right, right, and he was. I mean, I, I mean, obviously James had a pretty good life, you know. He he won one title and then he just partied a ton. So yeah, and I a little, think in the movie said a little he too hard. Him, yeah yeah i think the i think the movie said he became like a commentator after that so it's like yeah yeah lived every day like his last that's what it said at least yeah um i would say i would say the championship holds true and this is why i don't think it's that fraudulent is because all right he was winning races and then he won that race and you know he was 1.5 centimeters over nikki you know rats on him and then they had to redo the whole setup of the car and he like three out of the next five they showed he was like his engine failed or whatever so it's true i think part of the new setup was messing with the setup of his car which caused him to like bow out some races that he might have at least finished or because he won earlier in the season he won when nikki before even nikki got hurt yeah that's Uh, a good that's a good point but obviously after that he after nikki was out for 41 days or whatever he did go on a tear and that's pretty much how he made up all the points yeah I, yeah, I, it's just wild because, like, and Nikki said it or whatever. I, I would just, if that was me, I would also say, like, yeah, it's, um, you know, it holds true and everything. But at the same time, like, in the back of your head, you got to be thinking, like, I mean, a lot of stuff went my way yeah. to to get there. So, like, that would, yeah. like, fire you up even more to, like, get a legitimate one. Um, but, you know, you didn't, you didn't need it. Yeah, like, he's, you know. he's content. Yeah, like Nikki was winning like every single race, so it's like you got to think if Nikki's healthy, he's gonna be placing, like he's gonna be getting points. Yeah, he yeah. He was already massive. Like basically, James had to go on like a huge run, and obviously Nikki had to score zero points, which happened. But yeah, so yeah, I think I think uh, I mean obviously James doesn't give two shits. Dude, I don't think <laughs> yeah. <gave> <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, I would if I were Nikki, I'd be talking so much shit. Yeah, you, know, you needed me to get in this massive crash for you to even have a chance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and one one other thing. I mean, I I mentioned it in my thoughts off the top, but the score, which is oh. thanks to um, thanks to one of our listeners, Jack, uh, pointed out that Joker had an awesome score as well, mm-hmm. um, which I meant to bring up on that because like that was great, um, especially doing these like slow dancing i think it was like in the apartment slash on the stairs after the one song plays but the score in this one is awesome as well like during that final race especially and i think it had some behind it when right before nikki crashed which like i i have seen this before but the first time i watched it, like i didn't know any of that stuff happened so like i it was like oh shit like what's what's about to happen here and then you start to see like the part the car like fall apart but um yeah, I, I think that 
it took it up a notch for me. Like I realized like I really, that can make or break a movie for me sometimes is either the score or just like music. They, you know, actual songs they throw in, like it could lift a mediocre movie up to like good or great. And it can also take like one that's pretty good and bring it down. If like they botch it in like either the score or the music. So I thought that was really good, but I, I think it was perfect for the situations and everything in this one. Completely agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that it, uh, I think it can just make a movie so much more memorable too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Stick with you a little bit more. Or, I mean, we, like we talked about in our yearly music recaps, like, oh, yeah, I know this from this movie or this from a show, whatever it might be. So, yeah, definitely, definitely agree with the impact it has. Yeah. And also, I also love the end too when they show, uh, like Nikki Lotta and uh, the real Nikki Lotta and James Hunt, just like you know, they just kind of go over the the actual story, and Nikki Lotta kind of talks about. It, I think at the end too, well, well, the actor, but they're showing them like talking on the uh, like pit crew and like actually being friends. I really like that as well. Yeah, not related to the score, but I'm just thinking of things I liked in general. I <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah, I, I like that they spliced that in, while also still had um, I forget the actor's name. Um, Daniel while they had. Yeah, while they had his like uh, voiceover behind it, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I agree. I know. I, I I did think it wrapped up really cool, and like you said, JD, like the whole hangar scene, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, just kind of like that. Again, it was just like that mindset of like, like the Kobe of like you know you just want a championship. You're back in the gym at four a.m. for yeah. guys partying every night. And like yeah. you got a little bit of fun too. Yeah, one's getting on a plane so he can like learn how to drive within rules and regulation in the sky, and the other's getting on a plane with like supermodels going to Paris <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> Complete polar opposites, but yeah. that's yeah, that's why you know part of it. Wow, it's so great the story in general, and then yeah, the movie. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely agree. Yeah. No, I definitely love the love the movie. Loved, uh, yeah, love the story. Again, it's like it's a sports sports movie but like sport i don't really follow um thought it was pretty cool i thought that like learning a little bit more about like f1 and racing was pretty good but yeah you mentioned ford versus ferrari earlier where it's like two f1 movies i've seen and both have been both have been honestly really good so i like the the story and and kind of like the biography aspect to it Yeah. yeah agree any uh any other closing thoughts about rush Seems like we all pretty liked it, or pretty much liked it a lot. So, mm-hmm. I like yeah. it. It was a great pick. Yeah. I think it. I think it uh, was a good change of pace for me. Like, yeah. a welcome change of pace from like the super heavy dark movie. Yeah. But, like obviously this movie had some like dark stuff too, and just in terms of like Nikki's, you know, crash and like everything going on at the hospital and stuff. But I would say definitely much lighter compared to like joker and mystic river so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, i have to agree with you <laughs> tough to get worse than that so mm-hmm. where did that uh where did that put it on the list jay with uh, uh by some up? movies that have nothing to do with it but it's uh <laughs> right in between wedding crashers and about time yeah so interesting uh interesting mix of movies there but yeah i mean Def- yeah, definitely way different genres across the board there, but yeah. um, in good company, in my opinion. So. I would agree. Yeah, I like both those movies a lot. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, that does it for this week's movie of Rush. Uh, definitely recommend it for sure. We all loved it. So, um, yeah, it's still on Netflix, so feel free to catch that if you haven't. Um, but next week, you're going to switch it up here. I think it's my pick. So, um this is an old movie or older. I mean, old is kind of relative. I don't want to offend any older <laughs> listeners out there, but um, this is, came out in 1989. So this the reason I'm picking this two reasons. One, I think we have watched a lot of good movies um, in a row here to kind of start, start the podcast, which is great. Um, love watching good movies, you know, but I think this one is going to be, it's got a very poor critic rating and a higher um, like user rating, you know, like just a regular movie goer rating. So um, should be interesting. I think it's going to be uh, 
not like a controversial movie, but you know, differing in scores. Uh, we'll see. So it's uh, it's Roadhouse. Came out in 1989. Have you guys seen it? I have not. Okay, me either. So it makes first first uh, watch for us three at least. Um, the other reason I'm picking it is because Jake Gyllenhaal, I guess, is ha- a part of the remake or reboot. I don't know what the what the difference is, honestly. But um, just filmed uh, a scene for it at a UFC event about like a month ago, I think. So I saw that and I was like, well, I'm going to watch that when it comes out, which I think is probably not till next year, but didn't see the original. So I was like, I got to watch it. So might as well just make it the assignment. So, yeah, it's going to be Roadhouse. Very quick synopsis all it says is a tough bouncer is hired to tame a dirty bar so uh it's a kind of of a choose your own adventure there (laughs) um i think it's yeah patrick swayze which you know was huge during that time um so he's the star of it uh yeah so looking forward to that should be an interesting review um and it's on netflix i don't think i said that so another netflix one um that you guys should all have access to so yeah gonna be roadhouse next week i'm excited and yeah and 1984 uh for billboard hits as well so anyone following along with that feel free to give those a listen uh besides that have you guys been watching anything new me personally um the last and newest season of succession started last sunday um so that's it was a great episode just hilarious which i don't think either of you guys watch it right i think jd may have watched a couple episodes but i highly recommend it yeah i think it i think you guys would really like it it's more of like a i guess like kind of like a slow burn like the finales and penultimate episodes like have awesome payoffs um for like the other ones and then like their other ones which is like great character building and everything um and it's hilarious which I didn't know like going into it, but it's so funny. Um, so that's that's the newest thing I've been watching in the Mandalorian as well. But um, what about you guys? Um, I would say Mando, but I haven't watched in like three weeks. So I don't think I can say I'm watching it, but it is on my list. I've just been <laughs> busy. I was traveling with work last week. Um, so that is on my, the only thing really on my radar, I, as I said earlier, I'm like halfway through the first season of Succession, but trying to catch up. Uh, I actually did start watching something new. Um, nice. Kind of. Did you finish Mindy Project then? Or... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Going off, off schedule. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you know, had some uh, family in town last week and, uh, you know, had some downtime in the morning. My brother and I started watching a show you guys talked about on, on here, I think, was uh, I almost said swing and a myth, but it's a <laughs> full, full swing. That, uh, <laughs> the Netflix golf. Doc, I guess you call it a documentary, um, yeah. which is awesome. I mean, I'm only I think I'm way through it, but um, awesome, awesome. I mean, you guys talked about it too with like Netflix doing the sports documentaries are really cool. Um, and like, I obviously I like golf. I like to play it, but like last couple of years, I haven't been as interested in like watching it on TV because I don't know. I just wasn't. Maybe part of me thought it was boring, but watching this and like seeing the, the, the personalities behind the scenes um, has honestly got me super interested uh, in, in actually following it. So similar to you, JD, with Formula One, um, I think this is really exciting. It, it's really like just entertaining. Like it's, hey, and the Masters are next week. I know. Lock, yeah. lock in. Be locked in for sure. I'll be baseball. <laughs> baseball and the Masters will be, be locked in for sure. And they signed, they signed like the deal or whatever to have a season two. So I hope uh, like they, it, it's, it's not going to come out till next year, obviously, because they're filming like this season. So I assume they're going to have some, some footage and everything of this master's week uh, on the next season next year. So that should be interesting. So hopefully get some drama and everything. I think there's going to be some drama with like the live guys coming back. Um, well, not like coming back, but like, you know, they're there. I think this is the, no, not the first major since that happened, but I don't know. I just feel like that that could always throw some things in the mix um, with that because I think there's still some tension there. So who knows? And then hopefully, yeah, it's just a good good uh, four days of golf. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I don't I don't want to be too controversial, but I 
think I'm anti live. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> easy. That's uh, yeah, that's a take, Tommy. No, I am too. I I don't know. It's just like it's kind of with any like news, like even with whatever the football other Excellent. football league is that Rock did. Um, except yeah, that's like. Cool. Just anything with that, it's like I love football and everything, but if there's no like stakes behind it, the same thing with like live, like sure they have big names and everything, but like what does the championships even mean? Like it doesn't really mean anything for like legacy wise or anything. Same thing with like other leagues, like that the football, like it, it's just never gonna. I don't think it can pull me in personally, at least like to where I'm actually gonna be like invested in it one way or the other. So uh, if you. Uh, if you ask me if I like live, it's kind of a weird question because I said when it came out, it will be good for the sport of golf, um, which most people agree it was. Yeah, like, there's I think been so, some, yeah. Some crazy changes on the PGA Tour. There's now these uh, weighted events. I figure what they're called. It might be weighted. I don't know. But, you know, where they had one earlier this year where 23 of the top 25 players play, and usually they you don't really get that in a normal Saturday-Sunday field unless it's, you know, the players, masters, something like that um and then obviously the purses have gone up a lot as well so people make more money in lieu of going to live you can still make a lot of money on pga tour so i think overall is good for the pga tour don't really like uh live ownership i'd say but if they ask me to play i mean it's a lot of money (laughs) (laughs) have to turn down yeah i think that's interesting jd because like i said i'm not like the biggest golf fan in the world like pga wise but uh no i think like you mentioned I didn't follow the live thing when it came out that closely, but I think like you mentioned, I didn't realize like even like making the cut, like I didn't, I had no idea if you didn't make the cut, you did not get paid. Oh, nothing. That's nuts to me. Like, you just don't get anything. So um, yeah, I didn't realize that. And like, even some of the guys like that, you know, they'd finish like decent, they'd get like 20 grand. And it's like, Oh yeah. I mean, it's same thing. Like, I feel like you assume every pro athlete is a billionaire, but like, I mean, even in like, sports we follow more closely like nfl it's like or mlb like there's plenty of guys that you know i mean it's still a shit ton of money but it's like the lower end guys they aren't making millions upon millions upon millions so i think that would exactly where like i I get the appeal of live um you know it's almost like getting a guaranteed contract in football versus non-guaranteed or they can cut you pretty much yeah Yeah. And I honestly think, I mean, I feel like golf was an easy target for this because I really think the Saudi Arabians with their money would have probably done it with anything, but you can't really do it in NBA because the stars already get paid way too much and yeah. kind of NFL, but in golf, like you guys kind of brought up, if you're not making, if you're not winning every week, you're not making money every week. Like yeah. you're not you or know, even making winning. the cut. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it was a very easy target and also PGA is like the only one that does it. I mean, there's other tours, but pg is the best one I think too, probably like, most watch i should say yeah i think too it's like golf feels like a lower barrier of entry where it's like you know golf's accessible basically in any other country like nfl it's like you wouldn't have the talent to pull like to build another league i don't think but like you said around with xfl it's like we all love football but like that's not really pulling us in where it's like yeah like hey we have the infrastructure like we have courses now all we need are the names where it's like if we can pull some of the names over like i just i just can't imagine you ever pull like even 30 percent of like nfl starters or you know nfl exactly rosters, like pull them over to a new league because it yeah even if you have money it's like i don't know yeah and you still have to get the stars to get people to watch like no one's mm-hmm. gonna watch if gardner Minshew is your premier, premier player nothing oh. against him he's a oh. solid he's your starting quarterback right yeah now, as of right now I mean, like nothing against him, but if he's the face of another football league, no one's watching that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> they have like uh, – who is that – I don't know. Like, um, it was Ben – I think his name is Ben, like Danucci or whatever. He played a couple games for the Cowboys when Dak got hurt like two years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I saw like one highlight with him or whatever. It's, it's like the rejects basically, like playing, so. Dude, I remember that guy started with, like – commanders like week 17 <laughs> yeah it's just like random people like that like it, it's guys like that where it's basically trivia question trivia answer like yeah people yeah. playing in there it's like uh remember that guy's name was, i think his name was like deandre francois or whatever at florida state oh yeah yep like he was supposed to be like a heisman winner and yeah 
um yeah i think that's the thing with live like they kind of needed like dustin johnson like they needed like that like obviously like, every guy got an offer it sounds like and they kind of needed like oh, yeah. first domino to fall of, like phil like, yeah phil being like the face phil, of it which is wild like, but... the face of it. apparently they yeah. offered tiger like a bill yeah. yeah good for him i mean he doesn't need fucking any more money but yeah that's crazy it's a good show though i, I do like it I appreciate the recommendation yeah um yeah i mean so i think that really does it this week um uh yeah that was that was rush and a little bit of uh live golf talk so um going into next week like i said roadhouse is what we're going to be watching so for those following along feel free to watch that on netflix um also 1984 for the billboard hits and then um yeah that's that's pretty much it so uh, looking forward to it, and yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Great. See you guys.